Hi scholars, it's Miss Black from Arte. Are you guys having a good day today? So today I want to talk about stories and how fun they can be in our lives. But before that, if you want to send us pictures, answer questions, or leave a comment, go ahead, send all those to our campus coordinator and she will let me know. So I have a question. Have you guys ever been swept away by a story or the story has taken you to a whole new place that you've never been before? I know I have. I've spent hours just sitting on the couch reading a story because it was so good and I enjoyed it so much. What are some of your guys' favorite stories? So a lot of our stories have come from myths and legends of long ago. People would tell them to entertain each other. One of the most famous legends ever is King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. I would like to tell you about King Arthur before he was the King of England. So before we get started with our story, put on Put on a crown or just pretend that you have a crown on and let's get to our story. Our story is called The Sword in the Stone. In the days of old, Britain was ruled by King Uther Pendragon. The dragon was his emblem and he was a mighty warrior and a great ruler. He was not only the greatest man in battle, he was wise too. For he followed the counsel of Merlin, a great magician and seer. Merlin could cast magic spells and change shapes to look like an animal or another person. He was called a seer because he could see the future for everyone, that is, except for himself. Uther Pendragon had a son named Arthur. One day, when Arthur was still young, Merlin had a terrifying vision. He foresaw that Uther Pendragon would soon die from a plague that was sweeping the land. And he saw that because Arthur was the only baby, many of other noblemen would try to take his place as king. Some might even try to harm him, and war would break out. So Merlin secretly gave Arthur into the care of a noble knight, Sir Ector who did not know he was protecting the king's son and heir. Sir Ector raised Arthur along with his son Kay. Just as Merlin had predicted, Uther Pendragon died, and the British lords began to feud with each other over who should be king. For years, Britain was torn with warfare and strife. When Merlin felt that the time had come, he went to the Archbishop of Canterbury and said if the archbishop could call the lords of the land of London at Christmas, a miracle would reveal who was the rightful king of Britain. The archbishop did as Merlin asked. On Christmas Day, all the lords attended church. When they came out, they found in the churchyard a square marble stone. In the middle of it was an anvil, and into the anvil was thrust a sword. The stone gripped the naked sword by the point, and on the blade was written in gold letters, Whosoever pulls out the sword from the stone and anvil is the true-born king of Britain. Each lord tried to pull the sword out, but all failed. News of the sword in the stone have spread, with an invitation to all knights of the land to come try to pull out the sword. A jousting tournament was announced for New Year's Day. The knights would first compete on the jousting field, then they would attempt to remove the sword. All the great lords attended a church service on New Year's Day. Among them were Sir Ector and his son, Sir Kay, who had recently been made a knight. Arthur, only fifteen years old and completely un unaware of his kingly birth, acted as Kay's assistant or squire. After the church service, all rode in a merry company to the jousting field. 
When Sir Kay realized he had left his sword behind, he asked Arthur to ride back and get it for him. Arthur rode as fast as he could to their lodging, but found the door locked. Arthur had seen the sword in the stone, but did not know the legend surrounding it. He said to himself, I will ride to the churchyard and take the sword in the stone, for my brother shall not be without a sword this day. Arthur was alone at the churchyard for everyone else without the jousting tournament. He ga grasped the sword by the hilt and gave a light, quick pull. Out it came. Arthur jumped onto his horse, rode to the jousting field, and gave Kay the sword. Now, being a knight, Kay had been told the meaning of the sword in the stone. He recognized at once what it means to see Arthur grasping the sword before him. Unwisely, he tried to deceive his father, saying, Sir, look, here is the sword of the stone, so I must be king of this land. Sir Actor was amazed. He took Kay and Arthur back to the churchyard and asked Kay to swear how he came by the sword. Frightened, Kay now admitted, Sir, my brother Arthur brought it to me. Then Kay and his father looked at Arthur. Sir Ector remembered how Merlin had brought Arthur to him in secret many years earlier. Merlin had told him he was to bring the boy up as his own son. In time, he would learn who the child truly was. How did you get the sword? Sir Ector asked Arthur. Arthur told him exactly what he had done. Now, said Sir Ector to Arthur, you must be king of this land. I, said Arthur, astonished, how can that be? No man could have pulled out the sword unless he was the rightful king of this land, said Sir Ector. Now let me see whether you can pull the sword back as it was and pull it out again. That is quite easy, said Arthur. There in the frosty churchyard stood the white stone with the anvil, but with no sword in the anvil. Arthur thrust the sword back into the anvil, which held the blade snugly. To see that there was no trick, Sir Actor tried to pull it out. He could not move it at all. Now you try, he said Sir, to Sir Kay, who pulled with all his might but could not move it. Now you, Sir Actor said to Arthur. Very well, said Arthur, and he pulled it out easily. Sir Actor and Sir Kay knelt down before Arthur. My own dear father and brother, cried the boy nervously, why do you kneel down before me? Then Sir Ector told Arthur that he was not really his son, and that Merlin had brought him as a baby to be raised in his household. Sir, said Sir Ector, I will ask no more of you, but that you make my son your foster brother, Sir Kay, steward in charge of your lands. That shall be done answered Arthur, and no other man shall have the office while he and I live. The three men went to the archbishop to tell what had happened. Arthur took the sword in both hands and laid it on the altar where the archbishop was standing. Then he knelt down and the grandest knight present stepped forward to make Arthur a knight. The archbishop set the crown of Britain on Arthur's head and Arthur swore to treat all, high and low, with justice all the day of his life. The people threw up their caps and shouted, Hurrah! At last the true king had come to punish the wicked and to defend the poor. King Arthur is one of the most amazing legends out there. People all around the world still to this day wonder about King Arthur and his stories. These are great stories to learn from. They have different morals to them. And it also helps us to remember to be humble. I want to challenge your imagination. If it's okay with your parents, I want you to choose something around your house and I want you to be able to make your own sword. Huh. What's this? Uh, uh, uh. It's my sword in the stone. So, 
Be a good example, read the stories, and be swept away and learn new things and how you can be a better person. And I hope that you have a great day and that you had fun. Remember, please like and subscribe to our Athenaeum virtual videos, okay?